glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Well, let's look for a little bit in Matthew 25. <laughs> I want you to be thinking over the next several weeks, as we're turning to Matthew 25, I want you to be thinking over the next several weeks uh, of questions that you have about end times and the book of Revelation, Matthew 24, Luke 21, those types of things. And we're going to teach a little bit on this. Glory to God. We're going to teach a little bit on this. Matthew chapter 25. Look at verse 4. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins. Some of you are going, well, I ain't a virgin. Well, it's not talking about that kind of virgin. We're talking about the purity of your relationship with God. Amen. This is symbolic. Your relationship with God is pure. We're not committing adultery on God. Right. We're not cheating right. with other idols and other gods, having no other gods before Him. That's, That's right. what this is speaking about. It's speaking about keeping ourselves pure. That the Lord is number one. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, soul, mind, and strength. Amen. Thou shalt have no other gods Amen. before me. For the Lord your God is a jealous God. See? That's one of the commandments that He wrote us. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. How many of y'all have seen an oil lamp? Now, my grandma used to have a coal lamp. You know, about this big. And uh, as I'm looking this up in some of the commentaries, this is not really talking about a little bitty lamp. It's talking about a bigger lamp. It's talking about a big lamp that you can use to take outside as a torch. It's a big, it's a big lamp. Now you can look at it either way, it doesn't matter to me. If it's a little one or if it's a big one, it's a lamp, and then the, the story we still got to get right. <laughs> the meaning is what we're looking at, not the size of the lamp. But the meaning, we're, we're going to get into this. The oil in this story, again, is what? The, the, Holy, Ghost. the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit. It says they took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. So they had lamps. I don't know for sure what that is, but I think that's your spirit because our spirit is what holds the Holy Ghost. Ooh, Lord. And what did Jesus say? You're the light of the world. Right? Where does the, where does the oil for the light come, come from? It comes from the Holy Ghost on the inside of our spirit, man. Hallelujah. So that, that oil of the Holy Spirit. We've got to have that oil. We've got to be full of the Holy Ghost. Uh, how often should we ask God to fill us with the Holy Ghost? At revivals? Every day. 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 How many of you have ran out of gas on the highway? Raise your hands. I want to see how many people will admit that they ran out of gas on the highway. Ryan has tried to hold all of his hands and feet up in the air. I think almost everybody that's honest has ran out of gas. There might be those rare few OCD people like Mary Rogers who did not run out of gas. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> and here's the warning. You only run out of gas when you're not prepared. That's right. right. When you're not paying attention. That's right. Are you listening to me? And the same thing is what we're going to talk about in this story. You only run out of Holy Ghost when you're not paying attention. That's right. You only run out of Holy Ghost when you're going off to places that you should shouldn't be going and right. using up your oil. That's right. And draining it out. That's right. Hallelujah. Five of them were wise and five of them were foolish. They that were foolish took their lamps. Well, they had their spirit. They had, they went, they went with a container and took no oil with them. Took no oil with them. 
they weren't prepared. Well, I went to church last two weeks ago on a Sunday, and I had a real good prayer time. For two weeks, I haven't prayed, though, because I haven't been back to church yet. <laughs> well, you dummy. You're not supposed to just pray at church. You're supposed to pray every day, all day long, every, every time you get a chance. That's right. Lord, fill me with the Holy Ghost and fire. Woo, yes. You know, people have criticized the Baptists about something. You ever heard them criticize the Baptist? Well, they you go to that Baptist church, they go up that altar and they rededicate every every time some of these people go up there and rededicate every time they come to church. You know what I rededicate? Every morning when I wake up. That's right. Every Sunday ain't enough. That's right. Every day that I wake up, I say, Lord, I'm yours to do with as you will. Make me an instrument Amen. of thy peace. Amen. Help use me, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Don't criticize the Baptists. They're better. They're closer to being right than we are. We ought to, re we ought to dedicate ourselves every time we get a chance. That's right. Amen. Sometimes more than just in the morning when you wake up. That's right. You might have to do it two or three times a day. Yes. But the wise, verse 4, took oil in their vessels with their lambs. What they took in their vessels. See, the other one didn't even take vessels. What's it? They took reserve. Woo. Amen. They took reserve. Amen. Glory. Hallelujah. You better be reserved. Have a reserve of the Holy Ghost. Because you think the devil's not going to throw something at you? Um. You think he's not going to try to throw a monkey wrench in your works? You bet he is. You think he's not going to try to take some of one of your loved ones and then try to turn you against God through that? That's right. Amen. You think your house couldn't burn down in your trailer? Yeah. And the devil wants to use that to destroy you. Amen. And make you mad at God and turn against God. Well, I got cancer. Well, then you're going to overcome it, Jesus. Name. That's right. Hallelujah. You're not going to get mad at God. That's right. You're going to, you're going to get so full of the oil of the Holy Ghost, you're just going to burn that sucker out of it. Burn it out. <laughs> burn it out, Lord. Uh, some of you don't know the story, but Vicky's uncle, uh, her uncle Ivan, we all called him Uncle Ivan. How many of you remember, remember Uncle Ivan? Oh, See, a lot of you don't know who I'm talking about. He came here. I'm thinking 15 years ago, something like that. He came here, sat on that back row right there. Back there by where Joy is. Sat right there. He came here to die from Colorado. Colorado Springs, Colorado. He came here to die. To die. He wouldn't be near his family. He came here to die near some family. He had two tumors in his lungs. Two cancer tumors. They'd done everything they could do. They said, there ain't no more we can do. Go home and die. Oh. Am I telling the story right, Vicki? That's right. He came to, came to service one Sunday night. The Lord told me to give him a picture. I had a picture in my painting in my office. The Holy Spirit said, tell the usher, go get that. Give it to him. So I gave him my painting. My dearest favorite painting. <laughs> Love it. But I gave it to him. And so we had a service, and, and uh, I said, is there anybody here that needs healing? We're going to have a healing service. We want to lay hands on people. And uh, he stood up. And Nancy, my little old wife, she went back there and laid hands on him. And he told the story about five years later, ten years later. He said... Uh, Nancy laid hands on me and she he said he said there was a, he said it was like fire. <laughs> fire was going into my lungs. Amen. He said I was on fire. He said I went back to the doctor. Now three months after that, and the doctor said, Well, your tumors seem to be smaller. I don't understand it, but they seem to be smaller. So I'll see you in three more months. Went back three more months later. Well, your 
your tumors seem to be smaller. No treatment, no cancer, no radiation, no chemotherapy, no really vitamins probably to speak of. Three months later, went back. Well, they seem to be smaller. On this one, here's almost gone in your left lung. And then went on. Three months later, well, it's totally gone out of the left lung. This one's smaller. Went back one more time, and it was totally gone. Woo! Glory! Amen. Oh, yes. yes! Totally gone! Yes. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you. The power of God burned that out of him. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Is my wife a healer? Yes. yes. Are you? Yes, you are too. <laughs> we're we're Jesus' healers. Amen. If you have Jesus on the inside of you, you have that oil. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. See that oil that burns. The, yeah. That oil that burns lives on the inside of you. Amen. Just call on that anointing oil of the Holy Ghost. Burn that cancer. Amen. Burn it out of me in Jesus' name. You know something? I, I, sometimes I just say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I just thank you that your healing power works in my body yeah. and burns up every cancer yeah. cell that tries to get yeah. in my body. You know, try to, cancer cells try to get in all our body, and the yeah. cancer cells are all in, in all of our bodies to some small degree. Yeah. But you know, I just tell them, cancer, you can't live with me. I curse cancer. I command it to wither, to dissolve, disappear, and be no more. You go out of my body. Holy Ghost, burn the cancer cell. Right. Every cancer cell out of my body. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Everyone wants one? I think it gets so hot, it burns a brain cell. Amen, listen to me. That Holy Ghost power is on the inside of you. He's on the inside of you. We're not Jesus, but we have Jesus on the inside of us. And you've got to remember that greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. Yeah, that's right. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Come at it from that angle. Come at it from that angle. Okay, what verse am I in? Five. 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 But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. Are you wise or foolish? Wise. We're going to be wise, aren't we? We're going to be, we're going to be filled with the Holy Ghost and stay filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. Be filled and stay filled. Amen. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. The bridegroom tarried. Anybody know what he was doing? I know one person in this house that knows what he was doing. Anybody know what the bride? Bride groom was doing? Well, I'll show you what he was doing. Let's go over to John chapter 14. Giving him time to repent. Now hold your place right there and go over to John chapter 14. John chapter 14. In verse 1. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. Woo, yes. Amen. See, it was the tradition of the betrothed and the, and the groom in that day, that after the engagement, the groom would go back to his father's house. And he would build an addition to his father's house for his bride. Amen. So what was happening here, that the bridegroom tarried, why was he tarried? Because he was building an addition. Every one of us gets an addition to Father's house. Yes. yes. Hallelujah. Yes. We all live at Father's house in heaven. Amen. It's like a huge condominium. It, it, it gives us the impression, it gives us the impression that we all have our own houses. 
Just build my mansion next door to Jesus. No, it ain't next door. It's attached. Ooh, yes. <laughs> it's attached. Hallelujah. Yes. Jesus has gone to prepare a place for us. He's building it right now. And however you like it, that's how he's going to... I'm talking. Woo! Think about it. <laughs> streets of gold. If the streets are gold, can you imagine what the mansions are like? Glory to God. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. So, why was the bridegroom tearing? Because he was busy building something for his bride. And if I go and prepare a place for you, verse 3, I will come again. Amen. Jesus is not speaking <laughs> metaphorically. He's speaking literally. That's right. I will come again. Is Jesus coming again? Well, unless he's a liar, he is. Because he said, I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am you might be also. Amen. Glory be to God. Why are you always talking about the Lord coming? Love? I've been talking about that for thousands of years. Yeah, and he's come thousands and thousands of times. When my grandma died, he came to her. Took her home. When my grandpa died, he came to her home. <laughs> and he'd had a place prepared. But there's coming a time when he's going to take a whole lot of people all at once. That time is coming. Yes. Amen. Amen. The rapture of the church will occur. Amen. And the Amen. second coming of the Lord will occur. That's right. Amen. And I can't talk about it today, but I want to. If I had all afternoon, I would. I'm going to teach a lesson here in the next few weeks on the ten raptures of the church. Amen. Hmm. Did you know more than one person has been raptured? Not just the church is going to be raptured, but Enoch was raptured. Elijah was caught yes, away. Was. Philip was caught yeah. up. Paul was caught up. Yeah. The mid-tribulation saints are going to be caught up, 144,000 of them. The two witnesses are going to be caught up. The church at the very end, or the, the leftover resurrection saints at the very end of the tribulation, will be caught. we're going to be caught up before the tribulation starts. There's a lot. God's into this stuff. God likes, he just likes beam me up, Scotty. He likes it. He's into it. <laughs> There's going to be a whole lot of beaming me up going on. Hallelujah. I'm excited about it. So you're going to you're going to you're going to enjoy this, the ten raptures, of, of, in the Bible. Didn't know there was that many. I didn't know there was that many. I thought there was just seven, but yesterday I got studying. Found out some of these Bible scholars left a couple of them out. <laughs> Hallelujah. Where am I at? So he says, I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am, you may be also. And whither I go, you know. And the way, you know. And who's the way? Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. How do you, how do you get ready? You know, Jesus. Right. How do you know that he's the way, he's the truth, and he's the life? When you know him, your ticket's paid. The way is paved, and you're on your way. Amen. But make sure you know him. And make sure, we've got to make sure we're ready, that, we're, that our lamps are full of oil, and our light is shining bright, so that we can be ready when he comes. Amen. Now let's go on back to... Matthew 25. And at midnight, there was a cry made. Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go ye out to meet him. Did you know there's going to be a trumpet blast one of these days? There's going to, Gabriel's going to blow his trumpet. And this is the, and this is the cry. The bridegroom comes. Go ye out to meet him. That trumpet is going to sound. The Bible says the dead of Christ are going to rise. They're going to already be. And then we which are alive and remain are going to be caught up together to meet the Lord in the air. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Hallelujah. Go 
ye out to meet him. Then all those virgins rose and trimmed their lamps. Now all ten of them rose up. They got they, they awakened. See, we're we're in into the latter times here. We're into the latter times right now. And I believe that the the end times started way back in the in the day, where Paul even talked about the end times. He said, Know ye not that they're that we're in the end times, because there are many in our Christ and all such and such. So the, the end times started then. But the the main pivotal focal agenda that we look at right now to know that we're in the end times is that the prophecy of the fig tree. It's called the fig tree prophecy. The fig tree prophecy, Jesus said that uh, you will know the times when the fig tree buds. And the fig tree has always been symbolic of the nation of Israel. And in 1948, Israel was reborn. Yes, it was. <laughs> and we're in that pivotal arena at this time. Another prophecy that Jesus gave, he said that uh, the gospel of this kingdom must be preached in all the world, and then shall the end come. And David was telling us on Wednesday night, uh, not too long ago, a couple Wednesday nights ago, that... The Bible has almost been translated in every language except what, six? Six or eight languages left to translate. That's not, I don't know if that's going to take a year. I don't know how long it's going to take. Not very long. That means there's already thousands of translations minus six. We're that close to that prophecy being fulfilled. That close. Hallelujah. That's another sign. That we are seeing. Well, I don't have time to get into it. Don't know enough about it to tell you. But the prophecy of the of the blood moons. We're, we've got two more blood moons to go in the next year and a half, I believe, to fulfill a prophecy of the of the blood moons. Uh, Jesus said the, the the moon shall turn to blood before the great and terrible day of the Lord. Now we don't know for sure if that means it's now. Or if there's some other things going on. Every time there was a blood moon, uh, within a few years, that correlated with a major prophetic event yes. in history. And so we've got that to we got that to add into our pile of, of things to think about with the Lord coming. I'm telling you, Jesus is coming. Yes, He is. He said, "I am coming." <laughs> uh, John said in the book of Revelation. Uh, he was quoting Jesus. He said, Behold, I come quickly. Behold, I come quickly. Then, uh, then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said to the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. Wham, 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 wham. <laughs> We're not prepared, so share yours with us. You know what? It doesn't work like that. Not, not in the kingdom. I can't get filled with the Holy Ghost for you. You've got to get filled with the Holy Ghost for yourself. Yeah. Amen. 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 Otherwise, I just get everybody. I just fill everybody with the Holy Ghost. <laughs> I just throw around my Holy Ghost oil container and pour it on them. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Well, it didn't work that way. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. Well, sorry, tough to know. Hello? But the wise answered, saying, Not so. Lest there be not enough for us and you. But you go rather, buy to them that sell, and buy for yourselves. Take care of your own business. Pastor, pray for me because blah, blah, I got these troubles. Blah. Hey, Pastor wants to pray for you. Pastor wants to pray for you. But you know what? 
You better start praying for yourself. That's right. Amen. Yep. Are you listening to me? Are we supposed to pray for one another? Absolutely. But I am supposed to do all the praying and you do not. Because you know what kind of blessing you're going to get? That kind right there. Zero. He said where two of us shall agree, it would be done. He didn't say where a pastor would pray and you would just receive. Amen. Hello? God's not going to reward. God's not going to reward the unprofitable sermon. That's right. You've got to do something. Amen. What verse am I in? Nine. But the wise answered, saying, Not so, lest there not be enough for us and you, but go rather your rather to them that sell and buy for yourself. Everybody say, I'm going to get filled with the Holy Ghost. I'm going to stay full. I'm not going to depend on somebody else. I'm going to do it myself. Amen. You're going to pray yourself. You're going to seek God yourself. Hallelujah. I was 16 years old. 15 years old, got baptized in the Holy Ghost. 15. And died in Stephen's house. Filled with the Spirit of God. Changed my life. Immediately, I started praying. Became a prayer warrior. That was my deal. Prayer warrior. Everything was about prayer. Started going to the charismatic <coughs> church. And, and I led prayer, prayer meetings there to the older with the, with the older people there in the church. And I was just a teenager. And all the people that were come, they come was five to ten years older than me. I was like 17 and they were in their 20s and 30s. But I was leading the prayer meeting. And I was teaching them how to pray. Amen. <laughs> I really was. <laughs> you got to be hungry for God. And you got to learn how to pray and seek God for yours. You can have a miracle your own self. <clears throat> pray it through. Get on your knees and pray and seek God. I mean, I saw miracles. As a teenager, I, I can tell you story after story after story. Just, te just my teenage years of miracles I saw as a teenager. Blind eyes open. I prayed for this one guy who was blind. Was Another uh, person I prayed for, God put a disc in their neck that didn't have one. And he cast demons out of people when the demons were talking out of them, coming out of them. Had visions of things that we're going on in a different place. Sure enough, it really was going on. Why did I, why, how? 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 Because I prayed. Amen. I stayed full. I, I, was all, I said, God, I want to be full of the Holy Ghost. Full of the Holy Ghost. Well, I was having these things happen to me before. And then finally, I got so full one day, I got overflowed and started speaking in tongues. But you know those other things happened to me before I spoke in tongues. Some of those other things happened to me before I ever was baptized in the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking tongues. You don't have to speak in tongues to have those other things. Just take everything you can get. That's right. Amen. Take everything you can get. It's okay to be greedy when it comes to God. And I want your gifts. I want your fruit. I want your blessings. I want it all. Amen. I want it good measure. I want it pressed down. I want it shaken together. I want it running over. Amen. I want more of God, more of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. And if you'll settle for a little, that's all you get. That's right. But if you're a hog, <laughs> hallelujah. So one time in the Bible it says it's okay to be greedy. Hallelujah. It says covet spiritual gifts. Yes, it does. Desire spiritual gifts. You look that word up in the Greek where it says desire spiritual gifts, you know what it means? It's the same word we use lust. I mean, you just have a strong desire. You want it so bad. I mean, God says, I want you. If you're going to be lusting, I want you lusting after more me. Amen. Hallelujah. More of Jesus. Amen. More of the Holy Ghost. More healing. More victory. More fruit. <laughs> Hallelujah. More of Jesus. Woo, yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 
And while they went to buy, verse 10, the bridegroom came. Uh-oh. And they that were ready went in with him to the marriage. They that were ready. They that were what? Ready. ready. Well, some people say, you know, they've asked me, now, Pastor, if I'm backslidden, will I go up in the rapture? I don't know if you're backslidden. Is there oil in your lamp? No. If there ain't oil in your lamp, I don't think you're going up. You better have oil in your lamp. Hello? It's not that I'm theologically schizophrenic. Because <laughs> I do believe in eternal security to a point. But I also believe that you better stay full of the Holy Ghost. Yes. Because otherwise, you're not going to have enough rocket fuel to get you out of here. Hello? Amen. Glory be to God. You know, a rocket needs fuel to get up. Amen. Afterwards came also the other virgin, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. Oh, wait a minute. Let's go back to verse 10. Did you ever notice the very last line there? Yes. And the door was shut. 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 That ain't a happy sound. That's only a happy sound if you're already in there. <laughs> if you're at the marriage supper of the Lamb, and you're sitting there, and Jesus is serving you at that great feast, that's a happy sound to shut. But if you're on the outside, the happy sound is stopped. Amen? Amen. How many is going to be on the inside? Woo! Oh. Hallelujah. We're going to be ready. Sam, I'm going to be ready. I'm ready. Sam, I'm going to make some other people ready. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But he answered and said, or at 11, afterwards came also the other virgin saying, Lord, open to us. But he said, and, but he answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. Wow. That's a sad word. Yes. Then verse 13, watch therefore. This is Jesus. Every bit of these are the words of Jesus. Just in case you think I'm being too tough on you today. If I'm too tough on you, then Jesus is, is being tough on you. Watch therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. Watch. Watch, for you know not what day the Son of Man cometh. I really want to teach another hour. But it's five till, so I'm not going to. I really want to talk to you about the thief in the night. <laughs> I'm going to have to hold back. 